do you um, go into a lot of people use intention before they're taking some kind of drug actually to make sure a trip goes well or something like that? Do you do that before you meditate as well? Set an intention? Oh, that's a beautiful question. Um, I would say forms of that. Yes, there's everything you can do with intention or like it could be ritualized in a way like cleaning the dishes. I love cleaning the dishes and I use it as like karma, a karma yoga where like you're, you're clearing out your mind when you're clearing these dishes, you know, so like simple intentions like that. When I drink water, I'm like so grateful. Let me be like water, you know, I'm like, Poof, you know, that kind of thing. Yeah, but there's intentions with every with everything. I think with my mind um, having if it is at a point where some reason I did something I didn't like, you know, because our minds are very problematic in nature. So we hold on to those energetic threads that uh, we're trying to understand why that happened the way that it did, even though it just did and it was supposed to, you know, our minds hold on to it. And if I need to consciously construct or consciously think, I'll do that with affirmation. So that'll be my form of intention sending if I can't allow my mind to be quiet because it's thinking of something negative or good, you know? So you'll re you'll replace that within the meditation, replace affirmations in the meditation. But what's a level of perspective of that too? So it's like a perceptual uh, positioning yourself. So, you know, I'm feeling this, I feel this of what happened. What was that person thinking? Okay. And then what would a psychologist say? And what would my higher, higher self say in this action? And then I drop back into my own identity. I'm like, okay, what do I really feel? And then you have a different perspective, a higher up thinking of what that is. And it's healed in real time and you can move on. So our mind is only remembering things 50% of the way of what actually happened. And you can go back and reconstruct that into something that isn't as like energetically heavy or weighs down on your soul or just something that can be dissolved and let go of. That is so beautiful. Why have I never thought of that? Right. Because yes, our I've memories been... are terrible. So and, bad. and eyewitness <laughs> testimony is the worst kind of testimony you can have because people always get it wrong. Yeah. And what they, they create stories. Uh, subconsciously and what you're saying is you can do that intentionally and mm -hmm. reform a memory yeah you can I mean even is like if you have like a really bad one I teach this with NLP you can go back and animate it like if it's really bad like w whatever really bad to you right because it's all relative but go back and you can animate it and change it into something funny so there's like a stigma of humor to it too where it's like a little bit lighter you know where you still face it but then you change it and over the time, you realize it's like, okay, it's it's kind of just repressed itself and maybe even like been let go of. It's wow. like, these little, 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 yeah. That's cool. I love that. Yeah, but also conscious thinking. So with the breath, with the conscious thinking, that's a good way to calm your mind. So like if I'm not completely present and, what ex and feel one with everything that is in this environment, you know, what can I do to like change my perspective or like harmonize within consciously to then be able to let go of it? Because you're strengthening yourself when you do that too.